Hello, Needham, and thanks for inviting us into your living room for this episode of What's My House Worth? My name is Rob Tickton. This is Ryan McDonald. We are realtors with Hawthorne Properties, but for the next half hour, we are television show hosts as we bring you all the sales from the month of October. October, and it was a pretty good October, I'd say, in terms of being a seller, but we'll dive into those individual sales in just a little bit. First, let's take a look at the big picture and uh, kind of get our arms around exactly what went down in the month of, Ryan? October, Rob. Correct. So the number of home sales was 24. What else, Ryan? What else do you see here? We have some positive numbers. Um, I mean, we feel like we, we do say that month over month, but 24 homes is a pretty good number for October. The average sale price, Rob, is a very, very good number for October. We got one point, almost $1.2 million. It's pretty solid. Yeah. Our uh, percentages are tremendous. 100.7. I don't remember being that high anytime yeah. soon. It's recently. great. I mean, and, and even 99. Seven of original list. That yep. to me says that the demand is there and that properties are priced appropriately. Average days on market of 38. Uh, that's that's very strong. It's down a little bit from last October, which was in the 20s, but you know up from 50 last month. So that's good. Yep. October uh, is reflective of the late summer market, which means it's a little bit slower. And uh, 24 sales, actually a pretty strong number when you put it in context of the Octobers of yesteryear, and uh, you see that the trend is going, well, actually, it's it's pretty steady, Ryan, as you look at it, 23 to 24, but um, 24 is the highest number we've had, albeit by just a little bit. Yeah, this volume goes uh, as busy in October as we've seen in recent month years. Okay, well, while this particular graph isn't gonna make you jump out of your seat, it's possible that the next one will, because the average sales price Yeesh. is way up yeah. from October 17 to October 18. I, I don't know what's more startling, is the number of last year or the number of this year? They I know. both seem off. And, and for whatever reason, I mean, not when we do this you know, month over month, we're, we're always looking back at other, you know, comparisons of that month in prior years, yep. we don't usually see spikes like that, peaks no. and valleys. It's usually fairly, you know, chaise lounge-ish, as we, we've said in, in past shows. But this one is like, I mean, there's no rhyme or reason for that. Well, I, you know, I can remember this time last year, yeah. and there were 23 sales. Do you remember how many of the 23 were under a million? Yeah, like half of them. Like, how about 19? Okay. 19 well, that, of the 23. There you go. Yeah, so More this... This year, there's 24 sales, and there's just 10 under a million. Yeah. So that would explain the jump. So it's, uh, yeah, that's pretty steep, though. Yeah, it's, 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 you can't really glean anything from that, you no. know? Like, it's just, there's nothing that you can point to as far as trends go when year over year it's going like this. Yeah, it's I guess. It's very, very I think in it's inconsistent. Mix, market yeah. mix. Um, okay, we're going to now take a look at the individual sales. As I said, 10 of them or under a million dollars. We'll start with the low one first and then get to the big seller. So uh, our first sale brings us to 40 John Street. Yeah, and, like starting uh, in the first name district. Yeah, there you go. It's yeah. uh, near Elliott. And this one doesn't fear the claw, Ryan, necessarily. In fact, <laughs> it was uh, advertised to builders. Yeah, uh, and then the named exclusion, Rob. Yeah. First of all, I wonder if, the, you always wonder, did the named exclusion buy it? Um, how do you feel about, I'll tell you how I feel, but I, first I want to hear how you feel about the named exclusion. Well, Maybe tell us what it is. Well, you're right. That's, that's what I was going to get to first. So a named exclusion is somebody who has already expressed interest in buying the property before a real estate uh, salesperson signs a contract with the seller, and therefore they reserve the right to purchase the house separate of the contract that the listing agent has with the seller. Is that a good enough way to yeah. describe it? I mean, a little wordy, but yeah. Well, I was gonna have you do it, so, <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, how do I feel about it? Um, I mean, in what context? In well, the context of the seller? I mean, you're basically- Or the agent? The, from the agent's perspective. Yep. I mean, that's the perspective that we typically have, and it's, you're basically now competing with your client to yes. sell the house. Yes. And so, and what I mean by that is, like, if you, if you have the house on the market, and you're doing work to market it, sell it, you're dealing with other agents, other buyers, and then over on the other side, you have your client who's almost who's on their on their own kind of dealing with this one individual. Yeah. You're competing with them. True. I mean, I'd like to think that there is some kind of side agreement that you're not getting paid the full freight as a listing agent, but perhaps you're gonna help them with the transaction yeah. for a lower, for a much lower fee. But that's still one buyer against the world. No, so it I, is. I'll it still is. take those odds. Yeah, I, I, yeah, but I like to it, it, in the past when this has come up, I I've tried to say, all right, you know what? Put, you know, exhaust that avenue first. We'll wait until this person has decided that they yes or no on the on the listing. Otherwise, once we put it on, yeah, it's you know they're in the it's pool the, in the pool with the rest of the swimmers. Yeah, all right. So there's a few different ways to look at that, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, all right, 
Uh, well, that's why I put that on there. I thought it would spark a nice discussion. It sure did. I feel great it about sure it. It sure did. Yes, that's a win. 800 Central Avenue is the next listing. Actually, not too far away from uh, 40 John. And this was, um, did you see the assessed value on this one? No, I didn't. The assessed value was 490 grand. It's very low. Yeah, that's the, so their, their taxes, annual taxes were Are very low. in the fives. Yeah. That's not bad. No. It's changing, but that's yeah. not bad. But yeah. cute cape, Ryan. What else can you say about this one? I mean, you know, it's it's 11,000 square foot lot, just under actually. Yeah. Um, needs some updating. Yes. But I mean, it's a great starter home. Yeah. You know, it's going to be right near that enormous school. Right. So there's that. So you need L. Williams. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, there you go. You're yeah. Getting in and need him in the sixes. Yeah. What more can you ask for? 1473 Great Plain Avenue is the next listing, and. Um, Talk about getting in and need them in the sixes. Mm -hmm. um, although I'm, I'm hearing from my sources that mm -hmm. this might be a some sort of redevelopment project. Okay. That an investor purchased this. Okay. But, but we'll see to be determined. Could also be a rental. Could also be a rental. Um, but I wonder if those contents will stay. Well, I'll tell you. Well, they did stay at least from the seller to the buyer. Yeah. I thought this is a pretty good number for the seller. So mm -hmm. I, 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 had, I had seen this house walk through it. It's a good size lot, 10,000 square feet. It's close to Central. It's on Great Plain, but yeah, close to Central. It's close so it's to walk, to, walk to Newman, yeah. um, walk to town. But that's a busy spot, though. It where is. Where it is on Great Plain near the Central intersection. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, we shall see. Anything yeah, else you want to? I think we did see. Yeah, we it's did. It's already sold. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Yeah. 69 Nardone Road is our next listing, and this is uh, near Nahoyden, close to the cemetery over there. Yeah, it's across from the cemetery. Yep. Yep. It, I mean, what do you think about that? Is that a deterrent? For some people, sure. Yeah. Sure. But, I mean... It, oh, I'm sorry. It, it abuts the cemetery. The cemetery's in your backyard. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's not right, across. Right, not across. Sorry, sorry. So, abutting it in the back, especially when you have a lot of uh, trees back there, you can't yeah, really I, see I, it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's a potentially... This is a potential land sale, For I would sure. imagine. I mean, it's 13,000 square foot lot. Yep. Uh, it's an older home. And the, the, and the home needed everything. Everything. I mean, not only was it, was it dated, but it was also very tired. Like, yeah. So, it was in borderline rough shape. Yeah. So, yeah. If you can take, if you can somehow take the cemetery out of it as a developer, meaning screening, mature plantings, fence, etc., then I, yeah, I, I, I'm good. Yeah. Me too. Not everybody will. Not be, everybody but, will be. But but more will be than won't be. Is my and guess. that's reflective in the price too, because the thirteen thousand square foot lot is probably going to get you sevens if it does if it has a regular neighbor. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Back to the first name district. Yeah. Six Gary Road. I like that name, Gary. Yeah, it's good. It's yeah. Good it, of course, reminds you of... A couple things. Weird yeah. science. Weird science is what <laughs> I was thinking, too. Yeah. And a guy used to work for us. Oh, right. If right. you're watching, Gary, we miss you. Yeah, we do. But we must move on. So. Do they get this in Albany? No, I, don't, I think they get it everywhere. Oh. It's on the World Wide Web. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. So he could be watching. Yeah. I doubt it. No, he probably is. <laughs> okay. Anywho, we digress. This yep. one sells for seven hundred and ninety thousand. This was a house that was dated, but but very clean, mm -hmm. move-in condition. Move-in condition for sure. Um, Eleven thousand square foot lot. Uh, nice house. Quiet little neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. Tucked off a Noah net. Yep, yep. And Gould. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. So there you go. Next up, Paul Revere Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul Revere. This one goes for seven ninety two five. It's just two in from Greendale. Yeah. Uh, but a walk to Mitchell location right here. Yep, yep. Backside of Mitchell. Yep. It's. Another one's move-in condition, a little dated, uh, but, but, you know, by all means, location, condition, style. Yeah. That's a new one. Yeah. It's not location, location, location. It's it, lo location, condition, style. Where, with the exclamation points? Yeah. Yeah, but not capitalized. <laughs> no. It's not yeah. screaming at us. Yeah. And it's all of those things. 7,900 square foot lot. It's a little bit tight. Yeah. But, uh, but sells for 7925 Sure Into did. the eights, 152 meeting house circle off of... It's kind of like off a of central-ish yeah. slash Nahoyden, kind of tucked around yeah, back so there. Hillside. Central, yeah. Right. I mean, Great this is, plain. This is a nice neighborhood. It, it, like you talk about the, the Halloween neighborhoods in this town. Yes. This is one of them because there's a lot of interconnected streets yep. that aren't cut-throughs to anywhere. So there's not a lot of, of outside traffic on them, and, and everything is kind of easy to walk to. And um, So I like that neighborhood. This and, is it. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was going to say, and what I liked about this listing was it went on for 849 was on for about two weeks, then they reduced it aggressively to 799. And, and boom. boom. 
So, what do you think about the leaving? I mean, we're seeing this more and more. I feel like I'm seeing it more and more. Yeah. Leaving things that are sometimes always left, but they're being called gifts. Yes. I don't know about. I love it. I, I love don't. it. I mean, you're wrapping a bow around something that you are going to leave anyway, and then. Well, I no. I think it's more like, listen, we want to leave this. We don't want to make them <laughs> make them make us take it. So right. we'll be like, here, have this gift. Oh, they don't it, want my gift. And then you don't you don't want that. You know, then you're like, I don't want to be rude. You get to it be was offended a gift. if they yes. don't want it. Yes, but that's yeah, clearly for things you don't want. It's brilliant. And you want to make them feel awkward and I, have to say yeah, no. We're leaving this giant sofa, but it's a gift. So it, here, enjoy, take it. It's our way of saying thank you. Yeah. So that, I think, is the, it's not bad. Okay. I wonder what per, if the percentage actually works more than just Do you have to send a thank you note if you're the person? <laughs> I don't think so. Because that's, that's That protocol. would be nice. I know. That would be nice for sure. Uh, all righty. Over to 313 to Hoyden Street. Ryan, I, I actually wrote down your name on this one because I had a feeling you were going to have quite a bit to say about this. Oh, I, just, I mean, I did, I did see this house before it went to the market. And I have to say that it looked tremendous when it went to the market. Right. They did a lot of, the family moved out, they, they went in, they had some large dogs in this house. So yep. the floors were in really rough shape. So the family moved out, they redid the floors, they staged the house beautifully, yep. and it showed, I mean, it was really, really, really nice. Which and is also a credit to the listing agent. Credit to the listing agent, uh, the, the process. But then we started to talk about it, like is it, you know, they probably they had to spend some money in order for it to get to look like that. Yeah. So the question is always, had they just, put on the market as is at a lower price, would they have gotten to the same point once you factor in how much you spend to floors, stage, et cetera? Yeah. So it's it's interesting. You, it's a cost benefit. It, it did make for a quicker sale probably, and there's more upside, and it certainly works out for the broker, uh, but you can make the argument that you might end up at the same place from a net perspective if you're a seller right. by doing nothing. But yeah, maybe, but it's, it probably sells quicker. I mean, I, right. this it definitely house, looked better. It showed great. No it sold question. for nine forty one, which is actually five thousand more than the house next door to it, three twenty three Nahoy, yeah. which just sold a few months ago. It had more on paper value. Right, which I think you and I both agreed we yeah. like three twenty three Nahoy better, but this one sells for more. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, three thirteen Nahoy really can thank three twenty three Nahoy. It did set the market for it. It set the market for it. <laughs> yeah. Yep, which. Uh, but happens. you can't gloss over the amount of money spent to get this to look the way it looks. Right. Well, only you know. Or only you have an idea because you were the only one who saw it before right, and after. Right, so I just let the cat out of the bag. Yeah. Um, all right, next up, 41 Mason Road. This is, I like this street. Okay. It's uh, near Olin College. But not in Olin Woods. No, it's on the other side of Great Plain Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, see the take, pictures? Take that, Mason Street. Lots of stuff in this house. Okay. Did you notice? Are those contents remaining as well? No, no, no thank yous there. No, okay. no gifts. 13, almost a 14,000 square foot lot. It's a biggie. Yeah, it is a biggie. Yeah. And it's a, it's a nice neighborhood, another neighborhood Agreed. where you're not really driving through Agreed. to get anywhere Just else. don't try to say you're in Olin Woods. No, because you're not. Yeah. All righty, 8 Paul Revere Road is the next listing. We we just did a Paul Revere. Yep, right? this one's right across the street from that one. Yeah, so they were on the market at the same time. They but were. If, if memory serves, it was a very hot day on the broker tour that day. Yeah, this one. Is a big lot. It is a big lot, but it's it's sort of deceiving. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a 17,000 square foot lot or something like yes, that. Yes, correct. Uh, but but it's not all usable because there's, there's a lot of the, that yard that's outside their like fenced in area, which mm. is major predominantly to the side and it abuts Greendale. So there's some buffer that's technically your property, but it's outside your fence with trees, not really usable. Okay. Um, but still yours. And this one, the other one doesn't have a garage. It, the, uh, the fourth bedroom is where the garage once was. Yeah. Why just one pick? Just one Yeah, I don't there. know. I, I mean, it, it jumped on and off the market very quickly. Perhaps went under green before they got the pictures developed, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Everything it didn't seem private, to matter. Is it possible to have a privacy? Thing? I mean, I've definitely heard that, but I don't know if that's the case here. I mean, the agent who is selling it is, a, or the the seller is also an agent. Yep. Um, but I don't know. It could be. It's very possible. You never know. Okay. Good. Uh, two sales on Paul Revere and uh, two on Livingston Circle uh -huh. for this month's show. This is the first one. On Livingston Circle, and uh, it's 48 and sells for 1039. This house was uh, just you know just renovated, Ryan, basically a it few was, years ago. It was. It, it But is it a colonial? No. Yeah. It it, it it's listed as a colonial, and then it, then it refers to itself as a colonial. Oh, it does. Yeah. I don't know. What do you call? It? If anything, it's a gam. I mean, contemporary. Uh, Can we call it a contemporary? Yeah. What's the word I'm looking for? When the uh, a garrison, it's a uh. garrison colonial. I I would say. I mean, because the top floor hangs over the first floor yeah right I don't know it just doesn't when I see that I don't think oh look a colonial hmm. but 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Twelve thousand plus square foot lot. Nice neighborhood too. Yeah, nice neighborhood. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, now we're gonna go to Olin Woods. Okay. 160 Standish Road. This one took a little while to get going. Yep. Uh, initially went on the market at 1295. Eventually got there. I would say a pretty good deal for five beds, three and a half baths. One of the beds is in the basement. Okay. Pretty good deal for four <laughs> beds, three and a half baths. Half acre lot. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, really nice neighborhood. Two car attached garage. Two car attached garage. You wonder if it goes on the market at 1099 out of the gate. What does it get? Right. Yeah. Probably add or around that number in much less time, 55 days. Maybe more. In this town is an eternity. Yes, I know, it's crazy. Uh, all There's right. a little updating in there. I mean, it's yeah. you oh, can yeah. move in, but you're probably gonna do some stuff before you do. Yep, um, 122 Birds Hill Avenue. I feel like we're, we're starting to get into this stretch of uh, a good bit of money for, for not a lot of not square, square feet, yeah. right? So this is this is number one. This is on the corner of Morningside so and Birds Hill. For me, this house was my barometer of like the, the late summer. summer. Market. Yeah. yeah, like like is there still, because it went out there and there wasn't a lot of fanfare. I mean, there, nobody was blowing whistles. And I don't even know if it was on the broker tour. Might have been. I'm um, not sure. I'm, I don't know. Perhaps I, I was away. Yeah. But anyway, I didn't see it. And then I, I know I, it's right across from a house that we developed several years ago. And I knew the seller and I knew that she was, you know, a, a decorator and, and, and the house was beautiful. Yep. And I'm like, all right, I know it's only 2,000 square feet, but I'm very interested to see how, how and when this goes, because that to me will, it will be a good indicator of demand. And sure enough, goes in a weekend and for quite a bit over asking. Yeah. So it was that was a positive sign that okay, the fall's still good. We still have a lot of people looking. Because if no one jumped at that house, you I would have been, shutting down I would have been a little worried. Right, but if I, it was really really cool. I feel like I remember hearing that while it went under quickly and got a good number, it wasn't necessarily gangbusters yeah. there either. Right. Okay. So I mean, either way, as long as you, it just takes one so or two. So to your point of, of it being two thousand ninety six square feet for the same money, basically a million seventy. I'm taking this one over both Standish and Livingston, even though it's smaller. Interesting. Huh. Okay. Cuz. All right, fine. You have that right. Yeah. What about the next one? Would you take that one? Yeah, I'm still going to Bird's Hill. Okay, good, because my next one is the deal of the month for the seller. Okay. It's 18 Julia Road. Mm -hmm. And first of all, uh, a couple things I want to say about this one. First name district. First name mm -hmm. district. That's not one of the two things I wanted to say. First is, um, as you know, Ryan, I have a Facebook page. Oh, yeah, I've heard, I've heard something about Rob that. Rob Tickton, Needham's Broker. And on that Facebook page, we uh, post every sale. And so, you know, usually it'll get maybe a thumbs up or a like or a comment or two. But this one got a lot of play, a lot of people very surprised at the number that it went for. And it makes sense when you look at the house. So, you know, 1081 for, for what appears to be uh, one level living, it, essentially it's it's uh, multi-level, so it's not one level living, but it's 1,900 square feet. It is a U-shaped house, and I think ultimately what happened with this one is you want to talk about another house setting the market in the neighborhood. Mm. You had 24 Julia mm -hmm. that just sold for 1.2, which was a great looking house, yep. updated, basement. really cool basement, finished, tied into this big family room. So I think that people were looking at 18 Julia, and they're like, well, wait, 24 Julia sold for 1.2. We get this thing for 108 one we almost feel like we're getting a deal when in actuality the two houses were very different houses mm -hmm. so that's why it's my deal of the month i'll buy it thank you you better not <laughs> next up 126 old farm road and uh formerly yeah. 294 great plain f this one was this one a contender for your deal of the month well uh, you mean for the for the buyer for the seller mm. It's 1,600 square feet for one. Well, we don't know if it right. was finished in the basement. Yeah, but still I'm assuming. A, well, the basement was finished in the original house. So I'm assuming it's finished, finished er in the renovated house. Okay. But it's, for me, it's like this thing sold for 795 back in May. Yep. So call it 800 grand. Just carrying costs, closing costs, uh, broker fees, et cetera. You're almost to 900 grand. Mm -hmm. So you got to renovate that house and then sell it again, you know, for essentially. Two thousand, two hundred thousand dollars. Right, so it's very tight. Agreed, agreed. That's one discussion. The other one is you're paying one one nine for a ranch that has sixteen hundred square feet above ground. Right, but there's there is a, as we know there is a demand yeah. for, for oh, single level living, no, and there's very very little supply, and especially not in this location. I mean, in this condition, in this condition, it's brand new because very few developers are doing things like this. And yeah, we, I remember w when this closed in May, and we were talking about it then. We were very encouraging of. The developer was like, that's a great idea because you know it's very bold for one because there's not a lot of precedent for it. I just hope it worked out. Yeah. Is basically what I'm saying. Well, it, it was on the like market a, for 104.9. Yeah. 
And it sold for yeah, more than it, one Yeah, so. and, and, and I just hope it works out because it looks a little tight. Yep. But it, it can be a really th a nice thing for the town because there is a lot of demand for that single level living that's in move-in, nice, updated condition. Yep. All right. So, Got it. Yep. Goody, uh, goody. Let's go over to the Stepladder Street. 17 Longfellow Road is the next listing, and um, this one sells for 13925 they, you know, they bought it for one one eight two in two thousand and ten. Yeah, when it was so new, they made two hundred grand. All right. Anything else you want to say? The gas line recently brought to the house. Oh, fun. Yeah. Anything else there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sixty four Berkshire Road is our next listing, and this was a two thousand five construction, starting to get up there with the pricing. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good number. It is, and especially when you consider that you've got a thousand square feet as in the basement, but it's properly disclosed. It does reference uh, public record and the, or it's, I'm sorry, it references the basement as additional square footage. Yeah. Uh, Berkshire, as we know, off of uh, Great Plain within like the Elmwood Loop. Yeah, probably another um, probably good trick or treating neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. Walk to Broad Meadow, um, nice spot. Yep. Right. How do you feel about the seven minute walk to commuter rail and schools? Well, I, you know, at first I didn't love it, but then I thought they may probably put it in Google Maps and it but, tells you what the walking time is. Yeah, but it's it, both. It's which, two different things. Which one? The commuter rail or schools? Uh, yeah. It can't I, be a seven minute walk to all of those things. I guess it depends your pace. No, I know. It's, it's, it's. <sighs> that's, that's, I mean. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. I, I know. can't do it. Yeah. All right. Uh, 67 <laughs> Evelyn Road is uh, our first new construction. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. one five five. Lot sold for six hundred thousand in July of two thousand seventeen. This one abuts those old train tracks that run through the heights. And how about the radon remediation system already installed? I mean, it's kind of wanting a medal for something that's you know, if well, there's radon, you kind of you have to put it in. I know, so. but 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 are are all developers testing for it, or are they waiting until somebody has a home inspection, and then it gets tested, and then they're putting either the remediation way, it's, system. it's going in. Well, I, well, yeah, okay, fine. Either way. Right. The sump pump is something that's different. You don't have to put a sump pump well, in. Well, you don't it. know that. Right, again, it's true. All right, 115 Nardone Road. Oh, so we got our two. second Nardone. Yeah, geez, it's a day of pairs. Yeah. Um, well, if they want to know, the people who bought 69 Nardone, what a new construction house would sell for in the neighborhood. Go. That is a good. So how about this one? This lot appears to have sold. Did you look at this? Uh, in February for three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. That can't be right. Yeah, my two reactions were one, purchasing it in February and getting out on the other end in October is impressive. Yep. And two, huh? Well, yeah. I, I, I mean, three hundred twenty-five thousand. That can't be arm's length. I, I, well, or, yeah. I mean, I can think of one word and it's green. Right. Um, <laughs> Ten thousand square foot lot. Nice little neighborhood. Yep. Bingo, bango. Without seeing it, I haven't been in Nardone, but I would, on paper, pay that money here versus Evelyn. Yeah, I okay. Think. Yeah, I would agree. 58 Livingston Circle, back to Livingston. Um, you see what the land costs for this house? $860,000. Yeah, so you want to talk about tight spreads. That's tight. Yeah. That's tight. Yeah. And that, it went on the market at 1695. It's not very large. It's 3,500 no, square feet, which which I like. Uh, good job of that builder. Um, but you're right. That's 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 um, thin. Right. So so that land sold for eight sixty, and they sold it for one six five. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's a, a spread of about eight hundred grand. Which is I. So let's that's go. That's like you can do that like in Georgia. Right. So next listing is fifty five high grade. High yes. Grade. A different this spread. This land sold for seven seventy. Mm -hmm. So basically a hundred grand less, and it sells for more or less over a hundred grand more. Right. But it's a bigger house. A little but bit. Still. A little bit. Yeah, a uh, nice kitchen there. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. All right, uh, 30 Taylor Road is our next listing. And Ryan, this is all yours. Uh, yeah, I just, and I think it's just it's just because it's a big number. This is not, it's new construction, but it's 2014 new construction. So it's not brand new. Yep. Um, and you're getting almost 1.9. Uh, and and you're, you're out, you know, you're in a neighborhood that I, I was surprised to see it. When it went on for that number, I was surprised. And then when it got it, I was more surprised. Hmm. So I think the seller did well there. Uh, they they knew what they were doing. They positioned it right, and they got their number. Uh, I just was I thought it was aggressive, and it's just I don't think there's really a precedent for it in that that spot for a house that's four years old. Right. So I I think good job seller, but good job market. Yeah. Right. Good job market. Yeah. Overall, I'd say for the for the entire month of October. Mm. Uh, okay, we're going to go back to new 19 Parkinson Street, and 
you know, this is this is the prime example of you know people see the 218 days on market, right. but you know you put a house on the market at the early stages, and either somebody's going to jump in and want to customize, or you're just going to wait. Yeah. And then once it's done, or at least close to done, somebody right. can see right. so see what it's become. So and buy. peel this 218 out of this month, and what's our days on market average? I mean. Yeah. So this one though, Rob, makes more sense to me. So this is it's not a big lot. It's 9,100 square feet. It's um, but it's it's in a really really good location. Yes. Right. So I would say A plus. It's an A plus location. It's one of the few trifecta lo locations that exist where you can walk to three schools. I don't know if it's seven minutes to each one, but we can figure it that might be. out. It might be. Uh, but but so like I see one nine for this house and it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, whereas at, on Taylor it did a little bit. Right. And but yeah. this is also a nine thousand plus square foot lot. A little smaller. Taylor yeah. was was thirty thousand square right. feet. Right. So that's yeah. not nothing. No. Uh, and okay. this one also has a detached garage. Right. So you wonder what, oh, you wonder how many buyers were eliminated from this potential pool of, of buyers for this, this seller just because of that. And not that you can't live without, oh my gosh, we can't live without a detached garage, but there is a, a tendency to expect it when you get into this level of new construction and this price point. Yeah. So it's abnormal to, to have a detached garage, well, but it worked for this lot. It it's had to priorities. Be. I mean, you know, some people want the big lot and the, yeah. the space, and they don't care about being close to town. And other people, all they want is to be close to town. They're willing to give up a lot of things, like an attached garage. Right. Um, Seven Eaton Road is our last listing. It's uh -huh. the big seller. Um, interesting, because this one was on the market. This was the third time it was on the market. Yeah. I love that the sky in that picture. <laughs> First time, 91 days. Second time, 118 days. And then it goes on here, April of 2018, and boom, 17 days. And that also, in my opinion, I mean, that house, I'm sure everybody recognizes it, or most people, is on the corner of Eden and Great Plain. So you often drive by it, but you see it at a different angle. And, you know, you talk about this one and the one on 30 school, mm -hmm. right? Or was it 33 school? 30. 30. That sets, sets the bar a little <clears throat> bit. Yep. Like suddenly, you know, okay, 232 two for a house essentially on Great Plain Avenue. Yeah that's, yeah, that's a good number. It's a nice house. Don't yeah. get me wrong. It's it's a very detailed, very tastefully done house, but it's specifically tastefully done. Yeah. So it'll yes. be interesting to see what the next owner comes in and does to it. Uh, but it, it was a custom build. You know, they did do a lot to screen Great Plain Ave. Mm -hmm. So it is fairly private. If you're driving by it, like like the, the angle that you mentioned from that that picture's taken from is, you know, you don't you don't you don't really no. see that. Um, it has a three-car garage, which is unique, somewhat to the neighborhood. So th this is a really cool house, and I mean, it's it's. Uh, I remember it was on the it was on the house tour a few years ago. Yeah, um, that was fun to see. But it also has the the illuminated, you know, crow's nest that comes yeah. up on the roof. Yeah. So you drive by it at night, and that, that's lit up. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't an easy sell because, like you said, there wasn't really precedent for this number in this type of location. But now there is. Yeah. So, right. wow. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, market snapshot. Let's take a peek into the future and see uh, how things are looking as we work our way through the fall. And uh, I would say the inventory seems to be in line with the norm. The average list price, though, that's interesting. Yeah, what do you think about that? Um, well, this is what I think, Brian. Remember okay. last year we said October had 19 sales mm -hmm. of under a million dollars. Oh, and it wiped out all the low ones. Right, That's right. right. So that, I remember that, that. Yeah, see? So yeah. so that might be... Do we make that up right on the spot like we're doing now, or do we discuss it before the show? Uh, whatever makes me look better. <laughs> no, but, that, but that's right. That's probably what it is. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it was all. It was, it was totally timing. Just yeah. cleaned out. It's flushed through. Flushed through the inventory that was under a million, thus driving up the average sales price of what's left yeah yeah there you Boy, go math yeah uh and then explain a lot of things currently 58 homes under agreement which is more than a year ago so that gives us some content hopefully in the coming months yeah, and we if were, there are some remember we were a little bit behind in our overall sales at the beginning of the year yeah so right. if these 58 homes close that'll pick up the slack a little bit and we'll end up right back where we know yes. we're going to be at 330. yes 330 or right right within probably f uh, five or not even five yeah. Yeah, maybe five. Five, up or down. It's never in the 320s, though. It's Definitely. somewhere between 330 and 335. Okay, there you go. That's a prediction. I'll write it down. Every, um, every while I'm year. doing this, if people want to reach out to us. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, always. You can call us anytime. It's 781-707-6564. Uh, you can email us at rob.ryan at hawthornre.com. And you can always follow us on Twitter. And that handle is at Hawthorne underscore WMHW. 
And if anybody reaches out to us, you get offer one of those cups. Sure, we'll, we'll throw in a, we'll throw in one of these fancy solo cups. You think it's a regular solo cup, but it's not. It's yeah, bang it on the it's desk a there. fancy solo cup. Yeah. So dishwasher Reusable. safe. You know, these are these really. I mean, these are going like hotcakes. Yeah. So there you go. Little incentive. Never hurt anybody. Yeah. That's it for this uh, month's episode of What's My House Worth. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again probably very <laughs> soon.